I'm Leela Katayev, and this spring, I posted a tweet that changed the course of my organization, Real Girls. Here's what happened. Social media has been a great way for us to speak our organizational values to the world. I've really enjoyed using these channels to share information about media justice and media policy. It's something we care about at Real Girls because it's part of teaching our students how they are influenced by the media around them. Who owns and controls that media is an important piece of the puzzle. Over the past few years, I've supported our youth in presenting at Free Press's National Conference for Media Reform, and I've stayed involved with the Media Action Grassroots Network, a program of the Center for Media Justice. When the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, came to Seattle to hold a hearing about new media ownership rules, I led a group of real girls to testify about the dangers of media consolidation. I experienced firsthandedly the godlike influence the current media has on young people who cannot further consolidate media ownership. Federal regulators today approved the purchase by Comcast of a majority stake in NBC Universal. Today I was trying to think of a, a joke about our new boss, Comcast. The deal was first introduced in March of 2009, but has received a lot of criticism for the amount of media power it would give to one company. This monopoly is awesome! I don't know why this doesn't happen more often. Oh, right, because it's illegal. <laughs> we expressed our disappointment over this merger in our social media channels. Even more shocking was the announcement just a few months later that FCC Commissioner Meredith Atwell Baker, who had voted to approve the merger, was leaving the commission for a high-paid lobbying job at Comcast. Along with concerned people and major news outlets all over the country, we spoke up. Maybe you heard about the tweet I posted in response to the news. OMG, FCC Commissioner Baker voted to approve Comcast NBC merger and is now leaving FCC for a job at Comcast? For several years, Real Girls had been receiving $18,000 in funding from our local Comcast office for our summer apprenticeship program, in which advanced students make videos for nonprofits. Comcast had been a good corporate partner and hadn't imposed restrictions on that funding, so we were surprised when we heard from their local vice president of communications the very next day. Given the fact that Comcast has been a major supporter of Real Girls for several years now, I am frankly shocked that your organization is slamming us on Twitter. I cannot continue to ask them to approve funding for Real Girls, knowing that the digital footprint your organization has created about Comcast is a negative one. While Comcast can choose to fund whoever they want, we were disappointed that they retaliated against our small nonprofit's freedom of expression by pulling our funding. We thought it was necessary to speak up against media consolidation and educate our students in our community about the dangers of media giants collaborating with government regulatory agencies. We believe it is our continued responsibility as an organization dedicated to expanding media voices. We decided to take our story to the press. Within hours, the calls from national media outlets started pouring in, and our story showed up in the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, and more. Our participants were inspired and wanted to speak back to the media about what was happening. I can't believe you broke up with me over email because of a tweet. What the heck, Comcast? I thought we were friends. I thought you wanted me to speak my mind. What will I do this summer if this program isn't funded? Backed by the huge reach of the free press and magnet mailing lists, we launched an online campaign asking people to help us replace the funding we had lost from Comcast so that we could still run our summer apprenticeship program. We couldn't believe the response we got. Within the first day, we raised $10,000. And by the end of the campaign, we had made over $24,000. Even more amazing was the public support. We were getting major love from our expanding community of followers on Twitter and Facebook. Handwritten cards and anonymous letters arrived in the mail. It felt amazing to know how many people cared about our small Seattle nonprofit. And best of all, our students got to see firsthand the importance of standing up for your rights. Breaking up with Comcast was tough. We were really floored when we got so much support from people all over the world. We're feeling the love. When we really needed you, you were there. You had our backs. Thanks to your support, I'll be able to attend my summer program at Real Girls. Let's keep the momentum going. This summer, the videos we create will be inspired by this and other free speech issues. It's been amazing watching this next generation of media makers become impassioned and involved with these important issues that impact all of us.
Because of your support, the Real Girls Summer Program has been better than ever. The summer has been awesome. We went to the Allied Media Conference in Detroit to learn about media justice issues. We brought back what we learned and made five awesome videos. From net neutrality to low power FM to media justice, we've got you covered. Now we're ready to share what we've made with the world. The videos they created this summer are just the beginning of what we, the growing network of media justice and media reform activists and organizers, can accomplish together. I hope what they made will inspire you to advocate for media justice as well.